Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and today I want to talk about I squared C, specifically talking about the resistors on the bus and how to know when you need to add them. Yesterday, I started working on a problem where I've got this board here, and yes, there's a ton of wires on here. I apologize for that. I'd tear them off, but I need it for debugging what's going on here. Basically, this is a 4 to 20 milliamp input. It's going to come from this uh, accelerometer and it's going to go into this spectrum board. Um, I've got some videos on that. I can put a link up in the corner, but really what's important is we've got this little uh, custom board here. We have the four to 20 comes in on these screw terminals here. And then I communicate with it over I squared C to set things like the filter and gain. So this is a filtered, analog input. The idea is we want to set it at a 50 kilohertz low pass filter, but it allows you to adjust gain as well. I was having a lot of trouble with this yesterday. I just could not get data from it. And it turned out that I was not seeing any I squared C communication with it. And so I want to talk about how I diagnose or debug that kind of a situation, because I think it's at least somewhat interesting. Let's first go take a look at the code, and then we will take a look at some scope traces and things like that. To put you in the frame of mind of what I'm working on here, I have a PCF8574, which is what is on this board, and that's what we want to communicate with, and we're going to communicate over I squared Z. I'm using just a Meadow F7 Feather for this, uh, for testing, just because it was laying on the desk. So I'm going to create the I squared C bus on this F7 Feather V2. And then I'm going to create a new PCF8574 passing in that bus. And then it can have uh, different addresses. You may have noticed it had some dip switches on it. It allows us to have multiple ones connected to the same thing. So I can set the address via those switches. And basically I'm just saying what the switch positions are for those. And that will generate a, an I squared C address. And then what I've done is I'm calling all off. The reason I'm calling this is just to put some sort of communication on the bus to find out if I can communicate with it. Now I could run this here in VS, but this uh, output window is really small. It's hard to read uh, for you. And if I adjust it in Visual Studio, then I have to adjust it back. It's a real pain in the ass. So let's just go over to a console and look at what happens when I run this. So I'm gonna reset the device. And then I'm going to listen to the output from the device and we'll take a look at the code. Now, while it's running, let's go back really quick. We'll see if we get an exception, either creating it, which is not likely to happen, uh, or if we get an exception when we call all off, we're going to get an error. It's going to wait and go back and try again. So if we look at the output here, you can see that I'm getting this uh, error 116. And it says verify it's powered and it's uh, connected properly to the clock. I have verified both of those. It is absolutely got power and the clock is connected. So the question then is, all right, what's the next thing to look at? How would I diagnose what, what's going on here? I'm going to use an oscilloscope. You might be able to do it with something else. A logic analyzer would work, but a scope is my go-to for something like this. Let's take a look at the scope traces and we'll see how it is that you can diagnose what's going on here and what the fix is. I have a Siglent scope off to the side here. It's a pain to set up a camera for it. It's easier if we just do some scope capture uh, here. So what I can do is I can refresh this and it will show me what this uh, the state is. And in fact, I've already got a uh, trigger here. So you can see when it first started up, I get this single pulse. I don't get any pulses after this. I get this one pulse. You can see up here in the header, we've got five microseconds per division here. So this is what, 18 microsecond or so pulse. And it's got this weird shape. It's not nice and square. It comes up and then tapers off and then sits low, which is definitely not an I squared C signal that we want to see. So the first thing that I look at is I go, 
all right, well, this is a very odd shape, so there's something weird going on on the bus, and that's our first indicator. Second thing I want to do, is I'm going to refresh it again here. This is the really big clue here. This line is sitting low when it's not doing anything. An I squared C line when idle should be high, not low. So that tells me that something needs to occur to bring this up. And that's probably the problem is this is not idling high. Therefore, the, uh, the microcontroller can't pull it low to do clocks and data. So that's typically how it works, right? Is the bus sits high and the microcontroller drives it to ground in order to switch for the signal and clock data. So what we're going to do is we're going to put on a couple of resistors in order to take a look and see if we can pull this up. So what I've got is I've got a couple of 10K resistors. I usually like to start at 10. You can maybe go down uh, as low as somewhere around two, but you want to be pretty high, kind of as high as you can get uh, and have it still work. There are calculations you can do to do this, but the reality is it's faster to just pull a couple of 10Ks out of the box and wire them up than it is to go through doing all the math to try to figure out the bus impedance and all of that. So if I just take a couple of 10Ks, put them into the breadboard here, and then reroute my signal. Okay, so it might not be totally obvious in this rat's nest, but I've got the clock and data lines. They come over to here. Then those are pulled up to 3.3 volts here, and they continue on over to the peripheral. And then I've got one wire here, this black wire, which is connected over here to the oscilloscope. So now if I just go back and refresh this view here, you can see now the bus has been pulled high. This is what it should look like when it's idling. So now if I reset the device and go to our console window, you can see we have no error now. And if I refresh this and show you the scope trace, we have something that looks more like an I squared C clock. Now, this is not very square. We've got this ugly ramp but it's at least clean enough that we can get data off the bus. I don't really like that. So you can see that it's ramping up. It's not pulling it up nice and tight. So I would say 10K is too high of a value. This could lead to some, uh, some problems with reading the bus. I might get some inconsistencies or some occasional errors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something like a you know, a 5K or a 4.7K or something like that on. And let's take a look and see what that looks like. Up to a 4.7, I've only changed it on this one line because there's no point in continually changing both. I can tune on just this one line that I have the scope hooked to, and then I can set both resistors to the same value once I find one that I like. You can see again, the app ran. We come over to the scope, refresh this, it's much, much cleaner. We have at least a flat spot at the top, but even with 4.7, it's not super square. This one I'd feel a lot better with just shipping. I might try putting in, say, a 2K, and let's see what shape that makes this wave. You can see it's squared it off even better. This is a much nicer looking wave than that one that just kind of curved up to the, the high point and fell back down. And that's how I diagnose I squared C communication problems. Break out your scope, take a look at the waveform. So this is why a logic analyzer will not work very well, but break out your, uh, your scope, take a look at the bus line. If it's low, you know that you need some sort of a pull up. You can then start with 10K and work your way down to get a wave that you like the look of a lot better and that communication will start working. That's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching.